to get a little bit of the background, people must know, Skeptics Annotated Bible, this thing is thick. And it is full of awesome. This well, it's is... full of Bible, but there's awesome on top of that, which is great. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> I mean, first and foremost, Steve, let's get into this. What made you want to take uh, tackle on one of the most difficult, not only reading the Bible, but dissecting it and putting, for those that aren't familiar with it, Steve has listed every single contradiction, every single problem, everything in the Bible. That's why it's called the Skeptics Annotated Bible. When I'm going in debates, I use this. What made you, what inspired you to want to start something like this, Steve? <laughs> well, actually, it was my it was my sister, sort of. Um, she was becoming a Jehovah's Witness. She, uh, she was taking lessons to become a Jehovah's Witness, and I, I was trying to talk her out of it. So I thought, in order to talk her out of it, I needed to know more about the Bible. So I decided I better read it. So I started reading it, and I just started highlighting stuff as I went. And before I got through Exodus, I thought, how come nobody's done this before? And I decided that I do it. And since then I've been working on it. That was that was twenty five years ago. So once you start a project like that is a crazy thing to do. But once you kind of commit to it, you either give up on it or you never finish. Uh, yeah. Because it's just more than one person can adequately do. So I, I kind of feel like uh, anything that's worth doing is is worth doing badly. So so I, you know, I did my best, but there's no way that I that I could do it. Uh, uh, that, that I I could spend ten lifetimes on this stupid book and never really be able to um, to do the type of job that I'd like to be able to do on it. Right. So I still work on it. I still update the site every day, and uh, and I'll we're going to come out with a second edition, um, and uh, hopefully in a now, a couple years, it'll include the Apocrypha, which isn't in this book, and uh, and we'll also include a lot of other things that I found out since this book was published. I have to imagine. I mean, me going through it. I mean, like like we were talking about off camera. One of my my favorite things is right at the get go when you start, you broke it down into different sections, and and probably people that can't see it at home, but. There's a little symbol. So when you're in the Bible and you get to a passage, there's going to be little symbols next to these Bible passages. And what they have, the little codes for might be like, hey, this Bible passage is actually full of good stuff, so it's got a thumbs up. Not many and, thumbs ups in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There's, what, 507. But then you get over to Injustice, and there's 1,541. <laughs> you get to Absurdities, and there's 2,178. Contradictions, 462. Cruelty and violence, 1,316. I mean, these are the type of things that atheists, skeptics, whoever, that when they're when they're debating the Bible, these are the type of things they need in their back pocket. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, it's so easy as you're reading through the Bible to just sort of zone out and start imagining a little man running across the letters or something when you get into the begats, it's so nice to have those annotations there because otherwise, like I'm reading through the Bible right now and I know I would miss a lot of this stuff just in a daze if I didn't have Steve's help uh, finding all of it. Yeah, and, and it turned out that when I first read through the Bible, although I, 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 did, my, I did my best to highlight things, and I, and I, um, but I still continually find more things that I just didn't, didn't, uh, didn't see because the Bible is such a hard book to read. It, uh, so much of it is boring and it's repetitive, and you, uh, it, it's hard to put the time into it. One, one of my current projects that I'm working on now is called Every Jot and Tittle. And I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, with it, with, but, you know, where, where people, Christians, will often say that they don't have to follow any of the laws of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And of course they don't, um, except for, you know, they like the Ten Commandments, and, you know, they have, they, they have a few that they, that they like. Leviticus 20:13 that, that, that condemns homosexual homosexuals. You know, there's a few that they like. Basically, they ignore the entire Old, uh, Old Testament. But Jesus didn't, and he insisted that his followers follow every 
everything in the Old Testament, all of the laws, every jot and tittle, he said. So I thought, well, that's it, what, it would be interesting to start at the, in Genesis and just go through the Bible, writing down all, you know, all of the laws, listing all of the laws in the, in the Old Testament. In the Bible, I intend to go all the way through uh, Revelation. And so I started doing that, and it's there's just a lot of stuff that that I didn't realize, or I didn't I didn't see in the details, and and the and the the, the utter stupidity, you know, and cruelty of these uh, of these laws is, is is really shocking. I mean, you can see why even in Jesus's time they didn't follow it because they knew they were so uh, they were so absurd and they were so cruel. Jesus was uh, was was accused of, of the of the Pharisees of not washing his hands before eating, and he and he told them, well, well, you don't kill your children, you're disobeying your children, like it tells you to do in, in Leviticus, um, and that's one of the laws in the Old Testament is that disobedient children have to be have to be executed. Well, the Jews weren't even following that in the time of Jesus. Nobody, not no one, no one follows the laws in the in the in the Bible, thankfully, um, thankfully, I mean, there, there, all of us, every single person on earth would be would be have to be executed multiple times yeah. because it's just it's just we have, you have to be to, stoned have, to death and burned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a game. There's a game I like to play. Like what I like when I'm talking with hardcore Christians or fundamentalists, mm -hmm. and I say, listen, let's play a game. Let's follow the Bible to a T, yeah. and the last one that's not arrested wins. Right. Um, so there's actually a question that came up, and I knew it was going to come up. I, I called it before the show. Um, this is for the entire panel, uh, so I'll, I'll give this to AJ first because I love AJ. Oh. I'm a panel. <laughs>